So after COVID hit uh, spring of last year, we realized that we're going to be working more remotely and I was spending more time in my home office here as opposed to an office with a lot of other people. So try to make the setup as comfortable as possible, especially if you're doing a lot of tasks long term or we even have like public virtual meetings now online. So you have the camera set up and a lot of times it's better for me just to actually have a standing option. So this is really come in handy where I can just, you know, pull this up, just push the chair back a little bit and uh, just kind of do work this way. And it's kind of nice. So I'm in charge of U.S. operations. So I'm talking with all the U.S. team from West Coast to East Coast. We will just go over projects and tasks. I try to keep <laughs> There's a lot of organization that has to happen to stay on top of a lot of our projects. I have anywhere from about 15 to 20 active skate park projects. Normally I'll come in here and uh, obviously got the coffee going and my smoothie. If I'm not traveling and flying to meetings, um, I might be driving and meeting. And sometimes we uh, meet up at the skate parks for people who want to go over projects. They want to know more about it. I would say at least half of my job is education, educating people on the skate parks or how to advocate for a skate park or what goes into it. So sometimes it's easier to explain things to people on site at an existing skate park we've already done. If I'm at a public meeting and I wanna have something where I can kind of just give it to the kids who are advocating, we started this brand called the Motif brand, just keeping it really simple. I got Mayhew's board in here that he did for the enjoy. Thing. You know, something that we can just do to kind of help give back to all these skateboarders. Like I said, if I'm traveling and I'm in Georgia for meetings and there's a kid out there ripping and trying to do something cool for skateboarding and trying to get a skate park in his town, I usually just bring a couple of boards with me and just give it to him. Uh, me and Brandon Turner have been working on kind of like a hardware sort of accessory brand and it's called Living Proof. It's just another outlet. Uh, to really talk about kind of something that means something to me and him and growing up and not really having a lot. My name is Canton Russell and this is a day in my life. Did Steve Caballero ruin it when he had his uh, skate shoes and non-skate shoes? Dude, that's like a PA system on his back. So we're here at the entry at the Ocean Beach Skate Park and Rob, you know, Rob Field Skate Park here in Ocean Beach, uh, more fondly referred to as Shockus Park, um, which is actually due to a passing of one of my really good friends, Mark DeLellis. He passed away skating here a few years ago, super sad. He, he loved coming here. Um, I was the kid advocating for this skate park uh, for nine years starting when I was like 15 years old until I basically became a pro skateboarder and was able to have meetings uh, with input for the design of the skate park with Mike McIntyre, who was a skate park architect at the time. Uh, he tapped me and Andy McDonald to give some feedback on kind of the balance of street and tranny kind of stuff. And he had just come back from doing all the Arizona parks that were super sick at the time. This was the first city of San Diego skate park. So there's a lot of restrictions, regulations, things they couldn't do, could not do. The city of San Diego does not allow any skating outside of a fenced area. So to have like an open plaza like this, that was actually would be skatable, was not allowed. And uh, no matter how much we pushed back on that, we got shut down. But this could have been the first street plaza way ahead of his time in the early 2000s, right out in 1999. So this actually still is one of the biggest parks in San Diego. It just was the first one. So, you know, being done in the early 2000s, it, uh, it still works. It just, it just needs to get redone with all the shock creed and 
maybe some better stuff on the edges of the park and on the deck. So the bowls were actually supposed to be deeper, which is why there's so much flat bottom. And at that time in San Diego, they wanted to cap the height at four feet. So the bowls, the flat bottom came up to make it more shallow. That's why it's not as fast as it should be. It was great for bikes probably, but for a skateboard, if it was the depth it should have been, it would have flowed a lot better and been able to get more speed. You know, with the infrastructure, we can maybe come in and demo some stuff out and drop it or bring it up a little bit and just kind of help fix it up. A lot of people, they don't care about the condition, the surface, roughness, whatever. Like some people who consider this like a home park and a lot of parks like this around the country, they just adapt. Skateboarding is about adapting, right? So like it doesn't matter what it is, they just learn how to ride it and they like it. And sometimes they don't want you to change it. I'll give you a heads up uh, status on if when that's happening, hopefully by Thursday. And then if it's it's good, then we can send it to you on Friday. And if not, it'll probably be like early the following week. I'm, I'm hoping, cro fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll hold you to it. Okay, thanks, right, Lori. Thanks so much. Bye. All right, take care. Mm, bye. All day, every day. What's up, Zach? Not much, man. Just, uh, you know, Tuesday grind. How about yourself? I was going to ask you about, we could talk about that post you made today because I really want to focus on people talking about skate park advocacy. I mean, for me, the whole point for that post was just to keep the community engaged, you know? Like, as a conversation we always have, it's just like, there's this big gap in between institutions and city officials and skateboarders. So exactly. it's like a huge gap between, like, the actual infrastructure and then who's using it. We're just trying to like bridge that gap. You know, that's that's the ultimate objective. All right, we'll talk soon. All right, peace. Later. That's pretty much what I do every day. <laughs> Even if, like, for instance, he's talking about this Encanto project, which is in San Diego, there's a good chance we may not work on that project, but at least we're giving him the information to advocate and get the skate park in. And if there are 10 skate parks that are done in Southern California over the next five years, maybe we're lucky to work on two or three of them. That's great. We just want to first and foremost support skateboarding and uh, giving people a place to do what they love to do. And if we can help give information like that, it's just gonna make everyone's job a lot easier. Cool thing about this office is that right out in the parking lot, there's some sick red curbs. Perfect time to unwind, pull off some steam, have a little bit of fun. Bro, anything. We out here. Poods, baby. That's yeah. needed. Yeah, I appreciate We're you. We're promoting for a Spring Valley Skate Park. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. I'll, put on, I'll put on right now. Okay. Yeah. They need a that's, skate park. that's the love. Yeah. That's the love we need. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. Krishna. So he, he's yeah. one of the designers who built Poods. Oh, yeah. Great job, man. Great job. Yeah, yeah. The park, Thank man. you, man. Yeah, Thank you guys you want that. some buttons? Yeah. Just promoting the, the project, you know? Yeah. Ice cream fandom last night. Phantom Black. Keep it subtle. And, and, and Nick was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, hey, 
the video part and you watch someone even back from our era like do a run right like the space it takes to get from a ledge to a flat bar yeah. so you're like compressing jump up you grind you land compress you stand up you push a couple of times that's like 60 feet you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for following me around for the day. Got, glad everyone got to see a little bit about what we do. That's a wrap.